Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, coming up on this week's episode. Pilot shortage looms as certification rates decline. FAA selects NFTA to lead Part 141 modernization. China issues first Part 23 certification for electric aircraft. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a weekly program dedicated to future aviators and aviation professionals. Airborne Flight Training is brought to you in part by King Schools. King Schools has been leading the effort in producing expert aviation training programs and computer-based learning software for over 50 years. You can visit kingschools.com sale now through January 23rd to save up to $160 on King Schools courses. Now let's get into today's stories. New report says pilot shortage looms as certification rates decline. Despite a brief period of pilot oversupply following the COVID-19 pandemic, new data from the FAA indicates a concerning decline in certifications. This threatens to reignite the pilot shortage faced in recent years. In 2024, over 9,600 pilots earned FAA certifications. This created a slight oversupply in the labor market, with 0.3% more than required for stability. However, analysts warn that the surge is tapering off. In December, certifications remained 40% higher than 2019 levels, but were already down 10% compared to the same time in 2023. Projections suggest the current oversupply may transition into a deficit as soon as this year, continuing long-term shortages as retirements outpace new hires. The problem is compounded by the specialized nature of pilot training and the impact of COVID-era retirements. In 2020, airlines encouraged early retirements and voluntary separations, cutting 50,000 employees from the workforce. Frontier Airlines CEO Barry Biffle said, quote, that is screeched to a halt. When the big guys aren't hiring, there's nowhere to go. I have a cadet program and these kids are screaming at me, when am I going to get hired, end quote. Industry-wide hiring challenges are further complicated by reduced aircraft deliveries and an emphasis on limiting capacity to boost profitability. The current environment presents mixed outcomes, especially moving into a year expected to have record air travel demand. After the break, flight crew protects trainee from pilot stalker. Hey, do you want to save $90 to $160 on your pilot training? Well, look no further. King Schools has a flash sale going on until January 23rd. Whether you're working on private pilot, instrument, drone, commercial, CFI, or more, we've got a hefty discount for you. Heck, this discount is so good, even my dog is taking advantage of it. Our best bundles are $160 off, our combo bundles are $90 off, and our ground school and checkride courses are $60 off. Go to kingschools.com slash sale to get your discount. Just be sure to do it before January 23rd, and I'll see you at the airport. DirectFly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single-engine, two-seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Flight crew protects trainee from pilot stalker. A woman traveling with Delta was reportedly being followed to Atlanta by another passenger who used to be a pilot for the airline. The flight crew contacted dispatch and helped her get out of the airport safely. The flight involved was a Delta flight from Toronto Pearson to Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International in Georgia. According to Flight Deck Audio, the woman was going to Atlanta to complete Delta's indoctrination and flight training. After hearing her concerns, the Flight Deck contacted dispatch to request security and an escort on the ground. FAA Statement Regarding Wildfire Drone Incident The FAA spoke out after a firefighting aircraft, a Canada Air CL-415 Super Scooper, was struck by a civilian drone while it was operating over the Palisades fire. Quote, fire officials informed the FAA that a firefighting aircraft struck a drone while it was operating over the Palisades Fire in L.A. Thursday, January 9th. The aircraft landed safely, and the FAA will investigate. Please contact Cal Fire for additional information. End quote. Is a federal crime punishable by up to 12 months in prison to interfere with firefighting efforts on public lands? Additionally, the FAA can impose a civil penalty of up to $75,000. 
ALPA congratulates new Senate Commerce Committee leadership. The Airline Pilots Association International released a statement congratulating the selection of Senators Ted Cruz of Texas and Maria Cantwell of Washington as the chair and ranking member, respectively, of the Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee. Captain Jason Ambrosi, president of ALPA, stated, quote, We congratulate Senators Cruz and Cantwell for once again being selected to lead this vital committee that shapes America's aviation policy oversees the FAA, and ensures the safety and efficiency of our nation's air transportation system." End quote. Airline bankruptcy plague claims another victim. In late December, just a month after the breakdown of famously low-cost Spirit Airlines, Silver Airways filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. This trend is bad news for those looking to avoid the major carriers for their next tropical vacation. In the U.S., the airline industry is dominated by four major players, American, Delta, United, and Southwest. American Airlines stands as the largest carrier in not just America, but the world, with its nearly 1,600 aircraft and 5,625 daily flights. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. FAA selects NFTA to lead Part 141, Modernization. The National Flight Training Alliance has been named by the FAA as its industry partner to coordinate efforts in modernizing FAA Part 141. NFTA works to unify, protect, and promote the flight training industry in the U.S. In this role, NFTA will be responsible for working with flight training providers and the GA industry to assist the FAA in developing and implementing much-needed updates to the rules governing flight training. The first step will be a series of public meetings that will provide a forum for the aviation community to discuss, prioritize, and provide recommendations to the FAA regarding Part 141. The FAA is asking stakeholders to develop proposals to serve the needs of flight schools, encourage innovation, and ensure a safe training environment. They are an opportunity for flight training providers to offer suggestions that could enhance Part 141 for pilot training and certification for years to come. To this end, the FAA is inviting all flight training providers, aviation associations, commercial producers of training syllabi, manufacturers of aviation training devices, and any other potential stakeholders interested in participating to attend. Captain Lee Collins, CEO of NFTA, has expressed enthusiasm for the organization's role and next steps. After these messages, China issues first Part 23 certification for electric aircraft. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. China issues first Part 23 certification for electric aircraft. The Civil Aviation Administration of China issued a Part 23 type certification for an electric aircraft to Liaoning General Aviation Academy's RX-4E. The fixed tricycle gear High Wing 4C aircraft made its maiden flight in 2019 and can now be used in commercial applications. The manufacturer estimates its flight duration to be about 90 minutes with a range of 146 miles at a cruising speed of 124 miles per hour. Volair Air Mobility, LGAA's partner for global sales, will market the RX-4E. Volair said, quote, this green aviation solution aims to bridge gaps in short-haul regional air mobility, specifically in developing countries with limited road infrastructure, end quote, which aligns with Volair's commitment to introducing the RX E-Series worldwide. The RX-4E is marginally larger than the Piper Cherokee, but also has a wing that is 4.3 meters longer, and interestingly has no struts supporting the high wing. 
The manufacturer says the aircraft's, quote, high efficiency electric propulsion system integration, high lift drag ratio aerodynamic layout design, end quote, is also complemented by its, quote, light efficient and low cost composite structure design and manufacturing. The RX-4E extends on the earlier RX-1E light sport aircraft, which was certified by CAAC in 2015. The RX-1ES also claims to have been the world's first certified electric float plane in 2021. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.